Lesson 4.10, Multiplication Word Problem Solving, Make a Table. We can use the strategy Make a Table to help us solve problems that involve multiplication. A graphic organizer is a tool we can use to better understand a problem. Graphic organizers, like a table, help us see and organize data. It can even help us compare data. By making a table, it helps us to see the data easier. So flour needed for baking a loaf of bread, if we know one loaf of bread needs eight cups of flour, we can make a table to figure out how many cups of flour we need for four loaves, or two, or three. For two loaves, we would do 2 times 8, which is 16. For 3 loaves, we would do 3 times 8 cups, which is 24 cups. And for 4 loaves, we would do 4 times 8 cups, which would be 32 cups. Bob collects postage stamps. He has 18 stamps to put in his stamp album. Some pages will have one stamp on them. Other pages will have two stamps on them. How many different ways can Bob put the stamps in his album? So the first thing we're going to do is circle the important information. We see he has 18 stamps to put in his stamp album. And some pages will have one stamp, and other pages will have two stamps on them. But it's important for us to notice that some pages will have one stamp, and other pages will have two stamps. And we can make a plan to solve the problem. We can make a table of all the data. We make a table to show all the different ways Bob can arrange 18 stamps in his album. So we have pages with two stamps on them, and pages with one stamp on them, and they need to total 18 stamps. So our total column has 18 going all the way down. If he puts two stamps on eight pages, that means we have eight times two, which is equal to 16. He still needs to add two pages with one stamp in order to have a total of 18. We would have eight times two, which is equal to 16. Then we would have two more pages with one stamp on them. So that would be two times one, which is equal to two. We can add the 16 plus two and it equals 18. And we can do that for seven pages with two stamps on them. We can multiply the seven times the two stamps, which will equal 14. Then we can have four pages with one stamp. That would be four times one equals four. When we add the stamps, that's 14 stamps plus four stamps, that's 18 stamps total. So that works. We can do it for six pages with two stamps. That would give us a total of 12 stamps. And we can add six more pages with one stamp each. That would be six times one equals six. When we add the 12 plus the 6, it equals 18. So let's do it for 5 pages of 2 and 8 pages of 1. We would have 10 stamps and 8 stamps. That's equal to 18. We can do it for 4 pages of 2 and 10 pages with 1 stamp each. That would give us 8 stamps and 10 stamps, that's 18 stamps. We can do it for three pages with two stamps each, plus 12 pages with one stamp each. That would give us six stamps plus 12 stamps, that's equal to 18 stamps. Do you see a pattern? Do you notice a pattern here? It's going for the pages, eight pages, seven pages, six pages. These all have two stamps each, and it goes eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And for the pages with one stamp, it's going two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty
14, 16. These are skip counting by two. These are going down by one each time. And look at how many stamps are on the pages with two stamps. 16, 14, 12, 10. They're each going down by two. And these are each going up by two, just like the number of pages. So do you know what would be here for two pages with two stamps? We would do two times two is equal to four. And we'd have 14 pages with one stamp each. That's 14 times one stamp each is 14. And if we had one page with two stamps, that would be one times those two stamps. That would be equal to two. And we'd have to add 16 pages with one stamp each. 16 times one, which is equal to 16. And two plus 16 is equal to 18. We're adding this amount to this amount. See? So you can imagine there's plus signs in between each one of these. So we've got 8 times 2 plus 2 times 1 to equal 18. We're multiplying each of the numbers of pages times how many stamps are on that page. The number of pages times how many stamps are on that page. How many ways can we make 45 cents by using quarters, dimes, or nickels? So here's our hint. Remember, quarter, a quarter, one quarter is worth 25 cents. One dime is equal to 10 cents, and one nickel is equal to 5 cents. So we can make a table to show all the ways to make 45 cents. If we have one quarter, that's 25 cents, we would need two dimes and zero nickels because we would have one quarter, so that's one times 25, plus the two dimes, that's two times 10, plus zero times five because we have zero nickels. So we'd have one quarter, two dimes, and zero nickels, and that would equal 45 cents. And we could do one quarter, one dime, and two nickels, that would be 1 times 25 for 1 quarter, 1 times 10 for 1 dime, and 2 times 5 for 2 nickels. And that would equal 45 cents. We could do 1 quarter, 0 dimes, and 4 nickels. That would be 1 times 25 plus 0 times 10 plus 4 times 5. And that would equal 45. We could do zero quarters and just use dimes and nickels. We would have four dimes and one nickel. That would be zero times 25 plus four times 10 plus one times five. That would be 45 cents. We could do zero quarters, three dimes, and three nickels for 45 cents. That would be zero times 25 cents plus three times 10 cents plus three times five cents. We could do zero quarters, two dimes, and five nickels to equal 45 cents. That would be zero times 25 cents, plus two times 10 cents, plus five times five cents. We could do zero quarters, one dime, and seven nickels for 45 cents. That would be zero times 25 cents, plus one times 10 cents plus seven times five cents. And then finally, we can do zero quarters and zero dimes and just use nickels. We'll use nine nickels. That would equal 45 cents. We would have zero times 25 cents plus zero times 10 cents plus nine times five cents to equal 45 cents. We took the value of each coin and multiplied it by how many coins we had. Then we added them all together. We count the rows on our table. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight ways that we can make 45 cents by using quarters, dimes, or nickels. Emma has 
Four dimes and three nickels. Write a multiplication sentence to show how many cents she has. So remember, one dime is equal to 10 cents and one nickel is equal to five cents. If she has four dimes, that means she has four tens. And if she has three nickels, that means she has three fives. We have four times 10 cents, that's 40 cents, plus three times five cents, that's 15 cents. 40 cents plus 15 cents is equal to 55 cents. We know Emma has 55 cents. Dave's bookshelf has four shelves. He has nine books on each shelf. His father gives him four new books. So how many books does Bob have now? He has four shelves of nine books plus four more. He has four times nine plus four. We do four times nine first, it's in the parentheses. That's equal to 36 plus four more is equal to 40 books. So we know Dave now has 40 books. Because he had four groups of nine, we did that multiplication first, then we added the four new books to that product. We need to circle the symbol to make the multiplication sentence true. Eight times six, is it less than, greater than, or equal to eight times five plus one? Eight times five is 40. So we would do in the parentheses first, that's equal to 40, plus one, that means this side is equal to 41. If we don't have our multiplication tables memorized yet, we can break this six into a three and a three because it's an even number. We could use doubles, couldn't we? So we can use eight times three and eight times three. Eight times three is equal to 24. That means we have 24 plus 24. 24 plus 24 is equal to 48. So is 48 less than, greater than, or equal to 41? Well, the eight in the ones place is much larger than the one in this ones place. So we know eight times six is greater than eight times five plus one. So we circle the greater sign to make the multiplication sentence true. We find, found out what each side was equal to so that we could compare the products to know the correct answer. We need to circle the multiplication sentences that are equal to nine times six. If we get stuck or we don't know, we could try solving each one to see what it equals. Then, if we know what nine times six is equal to, that could help us. Here we have nine times five plus one. If we add the five plus one, that's a six. We would have nine times six. So yes, that's another way of writing nine times six. We can circle that one. What if the parentheses were moved around to the nine times five, and then it was plus one? Would that be the same thing? We can find nine times five, that's 45 plus one more is 46. That's not the same thing as nine times six. Nine times six is equal to 54. So this one is not the same thing. What about nine times and then seven minus one in parentheses? If we do the parentheses first, like we're supposed to, seven minus one is a six we would have nine times six. So this one is equal to nine times six. It's using the distributive property with subtraction, isn't it? Is six times nine equal to nine times six? The commutative property of multiplication says that we can multiply in any order. So yes, six times nine will be equal to nine times six. We can circle that one. What about six times 
8 plus 1. If we do in the parentheses first, 8 plus 1 is a 9. This would be 6 times 9. It's the same as this one, and it's a different order than 9 times 6. So yes, this would be the same thing as 9 times 6, or 6 times 9. So we can circle that one. What about 9 times 5 plus 9 more? Would that be the same thing as 9 times 6? If we had 9 groups of 5 and we added another 9, would that be equal to 54? We can skip count by 5s 9 times. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So we would have 45 plus 9. Yes, that's equal to 54. So this one also can be circled. If you're not sure, then find what it is equal to and see if it is equal to the problem that's given. What about 9 times and then 8 minus 2 in parentheses? 8 minus 2 is 6. This would be 9 times 6. So yes, we can circle this one. That's the same thing as 9 times 6. What about 6 times 8 plus 1 more? 6 times 8 is equal to 48. 48 plus 1 is 49, so no, that one doesn't work. It's not the same thing. The parentheses needed to be around the 8 plus 1, not the 6 times 8, so that one does not work. What about 9 times 4 plus 2 in parentheses? Well, 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. We would have 9 times 6, so yes, that one also is a way of writing 9 times 6, and it's equal to 54. So depending on how they're grouped and what order they are in will depend on if it's the same as this multiplication sentence and if they'll equal the same thing. You can always solve these problems to find if they're equal to that problem. So we can solve multiplication word problems by making a table or even a list to show us the relationship between the amounts. And we can find different ways to arrange the amounts. We can add two products together to get a total. This is the end of chapter four. I hope I'll see you in chapter five and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.